going to talk a little bit about self-disclosure and we're going to reveal ourselves to others and self-disclosure is just basically telling yourself telling information about yourself to another person you may talk about your values your beliefs your desires you may talk about your behavior you may talk about self qualities or characteristics self-disclosure is influenced by several things the first is self-concept it's also influenced by the listeners who are who are we telling these things to the topic the channel face-to-face -face or computer mediated culture what culture were we brought up in and what beliefs do we have there and then gender it's interesting that women probably tell more to women but men tell more to women than they do men. So if you have a man, he's going to tell more to probably his female friends than his male friends. That's why wives are so important to husbands, because wives are the woman that men can really expose their hearts to without being judged or thought of to be a wuss. You can't really do that with another man. Some of you may be lucky enough to have another man that you can really Ex disclose yourself too, but for the most part, men tend to disclose more to other women. There are some rewards and dangers in self disclosure. Let's start with those dangers. There's personal risks when you disclose aspects of your life, and that means that you may experience rejection. Relational risk, your relationship may be threatened because of some disclosure you've made. Professional risks, sometimes if you disclose certain aspects in a professional setting or at work, you may actually have some repercussions from that. Maybe you don't get a promotion or people don't give you bigger projects. Think, for example, if you went into work and you told your manager that you were getting a divorce, that may be something that then they use to kind of talk people out of giving you projects or allowing you to take on added tasks because they assume that you're having a difficult time, which of course you are. Understand that one of the dangers of self-disclosure is you can't take it back, just like we know. Communication is irreversible, so is self-disclosure. Some of the rewards that we see is that we get to understand ourselves better. We have more self-knowledge when we talk through things about ourselves to other. Helps us to cope with aspects of our life that may be difficult. And there's a certain effectiveness that we have to have uh, when we self-disclose. And it also helps us to really process things about us and it makes us a more effective communicator in general. Also, it is very meaningful. It allows you to have meaningful relations where you're truly connected with another person because they know so much about you. And then last but not least is their physiological health. When you tell other people about you, it helps you to really have a mental awareness but also a mental link to somebody else. And you can talk out things that are bothering you and it, airing out your, your issues makes you feel better. And that is physiological health. Just a a, a better improved mental state. When self-disclosing, there's a couple of things to consider, and the first is the motivation. Why are you revealing this? What is the motivation? Is it to hurt others? Because if it's to hurt somebody, then probably you shouldn't self-disclose. But if it's to help that other person understand you better, then by all means, go ahead and do that. The appropriateness of the context, make sure that you're in a place where it's not going to be uncomfortable. A coffee shop, probably not the best place. Your home, definitely a better place. Gradual disclosure, make sure that it's gradual when you're self-disclosing. You don't sit down and have a six-hour conversation with somebody. That is how a lot of people say their relationship started, but sometimes it takes the fun out of the gradual um, discovery, so do it gradually. And then make sure that you disclose without imposing burdens. Sometimes the things we disclose, it makes others feel bad. It makes people feel like, oh gosh, I can't tell anybody this. This is too much and I have to tell somebody it's just too hard for me to keep this a secret. So don't impose burdens on other people when you are self-disclosing. When you respond to self-disclosure, 
Use effective and active listening. Make sure you ask questions and you paraphrase. Support and reinforce the disclosure. Make sure that you say, you know, this is really nice of you to share this with me. I feel very privileged that you would. Willingly reciprocate. That means if somebody tells you something personal, you should do the same. And in practice confidentiality, do not tell other people things about whatever the speaker told you. Last but not least, the end of your chapter talks about small talk, and I'm not going to go into a lot of it except for the excuses and apology portion because this is how we repair our conversations, repair mistakes we've made. So the first thing that we can use is an excuse, and when we use an excuse, we do it for four reasons, and that's over there in the first box, the motives. And the motives are to maintain our self-esteem. I still feel good about myself because it wasn't really my fault. We project a positive self-image. See, I'm still a good person. We reduce the stress that our mistakes cause us. And it helps us to maintain our relationships when we make excuses. Three different types. I didn't do it. That wasn't me. I was out of my mind when I was doing that. You know I would never do anything like that. And it wasn't so bad. I was only two hours late. It wasn't so bad. You weren't even good friends with her. Things like that are really hard to take, but we do hear excuses like that. And then finally, last but not least, is the third type of excuse, and that is a yes, but excuse that says, yes, I did it, but this is why I did it. How can you use excuses to your advantage? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to demonstrate that you understand the problem and that your partner's feelings are justified. So you wouldn't want to minimize, I was only two hours late. She wasn't even that good of a friend to you. You want to say, I understand why you're upset. If you were late coming home, I would be upset too. You need to avoid blaming others. So take responsibility for yourself. Say, I'm sorry, I did talk about somebody, talk about you behind your back, and that was wrong of me to do that. Don't throw other people in. Take responsibility only for yourself, even if it was something that you did as a group decision. Practice moderation. Make sure that you're not coming up with excuses every single day. Most of us in this class are parents, or at least a good portion of us, and we would say, I'm tired of your excuses. And what we're saying to that individual, child, or uh, teenager is you're not practicing moderation with your excuses. Excuses once in a while are fine and I can deal with those, but when I hear excuses all the time, I begin to think that you're just using excuses to get out of doing things. And then last but not least, make sure that your misdeed, whatever it is that you did that was wrong, that it won't happen again. Now that's tricky because most of us have areas where we continually trip up but I think the best thing to say is I will try my hardest to make sure this doesn't happen again. That may be a little bit more honest than I won't do it ever again. And then the next thing is an apology. We should all be better at apologizing than we are. And basically an apology is just an expression of regret for something you did. It generates forgiveness and assurance. When you officially ask for somebody's forgiveness, it really makes that other person assured that you care about that relationship. So I always ask my kids whenever they're fighting, I always say when they did something wrong, they have to apologize but then say, will you forgive me? Because it enables a process of forgiveness both for the person asking and the person who has to do the forgiving. I think that's an important thing to do. Next is it can repair relationships or the rep reputation of the offender. And apologies are important if you want to maintain relationships. That is all of Chapter 8. Your textbook also goes over giving compliments and how to give advice. You can look over those. They're certainly important, especially the, the section on advice. I've told you often that if somebody doesn't ask you for advice, don't give it. That still rings true, even though when somebody does ask for advice, there are some tips that would prove helpful. So definitely read that section. And hopefully this has proved, proven somewhat helpful to you today, and we'll talk soon in Chapter 9.